Hi all, I have another very interesting encounter to show you today, Stockfish against Lula. This is in the Chesscon Winter Classic final, which is 10 minutes with a 10 second increment. So let's see what happened. E4 from Stockfish, the opening book given to them, is in the classic Joker Piano. So we have here Black playing now Knight F6, C3, A6, A4, Black Castles, Rook E1, Bishop tucks away on a7, knight bd2, and now knight g4 hitting that soft spot. So what's the idea of this? Can't it be easily defended? Rook e2, king h8. Now we have the knight being kicked and it goes to h6. So the idea was not just to encourage rook e2, but to prepare f5, unlocking the potential of the f pawn here to get some play on the F file generally. B4, F5, now we have Knight H2, F takes E4. One slight downside with this approach of opening that semi-open F file is that White also has now semi-open D file pressure, which could be handy. We see Queen F6, Knight D F3, Queen G6, and now there's one or two uh, frets here the immediate concern is bishop takes h3. White did actually play king h1, and you might wonder, hold on a sec, isn't there uh, a tactic for white here if bishop takes h3? Can't white play this, knight h4? Uh, actually here, there's queen takes e4 hitting uh, the loose bishop on c4, so this ends up being very nice for black. And also, by the way, instead of king h1, knight h4 immediately, it seems queen g3 is pretty strong, converging all the pressure on f2 here. And what does white do? If, say this, then bishop takes h3 now. And here, actually, black can tactically uh, handle things nicely. For example, like this, with a big advantage. So king h1. A5, and this is very interesting for trying to get this key dark square, the C5 square, if white plays B5. White is not tempted to do that. White played Queen D2, keeping things solid here, protecting actually B4 as well, uh, indirectly, but also Queen G5 is on the card sometimes. Uh, if B5 had been played, the C5 square is very nice for black, so Knight D8, say this position, uh, black ends up uh, protecting things. I know the knight's on the back row, but this actually springs back with a vengeance. Black's getting a small edge here at least. That c5 square could be very useful in the future. Uh, so we have actually uh, queen d2, just keeping the tension here, not playing b5. Knight g8, and now b5 here. So we're leaving the pressure on b4, so this queen can actually move. And it does actually go to g5. Now, Leela obliges with the queens coming off. Now we have knight f6. Now this is taken, actually. So that's an interesting decision. By giving up the dark squared bishop, quite often there's a light square strategy. Here, you can imagine, potentially, if a knight manages to somehow get to d5, this is going to be sensitive for c7. Uh, and d6 later because of that semi-open file. So it's a, a very interesting decision to give black, hand black, the bishop pair. Is this dark square bishop going to be useful or not? This is the right way to take it, it seems. On g takes, knight h4 is annoying for black. Uh, so keeping the pressure on the f file seems logical. But now we have knight g4. Now black doesn't really want to give up the light square bishop here. Uh, so we have actually rook f4, putting some pressure on e4. Knight f h2, now supporting g4, which means this knight uh, could be heading to e3 to d5 to hit c7. So there's interesting tactics in this position emerging. If white had played rook f1, black's in a comfortable position here. As an example, just, uh, just to illustrate, black can increase the coordination on the f file 
and play for e4 pressure. I know the king's there and it looks a bit dangerous. But eventually, yeah, white's uh, cracking here in this position. It seems as though, yeah, black can really build the pressure uh, in this fictional example. So um, here, if, for example, knight e3, uh, rook takes e4, this position uh, is only even. But uh, black doesn't have to do that. Black can play knight c5 to safeguard the diagonal first and look at the pressure on e4. It's very awkward for white. Black's getting a big advantage there. So there's a lot of pressure potentially building up on e4 and the f-file generally. So we see this move, knight f h2, h5. And this really encourages now, after knight e3, black to take this pawn. So is this a trap being set, a tactical trap? Lena obliges to see the trap effect by taking the pawn. On c6, white will just protect that pawn potentially, and it should be at least even. Even though black's got the dark square bishop, it might be difficult to do stuff with it. So we have that being taken, and now we have bishop d3, and it looks as though this forcing sequence could be nasty after knight d5. So hitting f4 and c7, now, a shocking move here. I wonder if you can guess, if I give you five seconds, starting from now. What does Lena play? Okay, knight e6. A centre pawn was taken out, which is perhaps worth more than a pawn. Black's bishop pair must be worth something. Uh, it's these factors which make this a very interesting exchange sacrifice for just one pawn. Before we get into it, uh, if black had gone to f7, there's an, yet another forcing move to face. And this is getting a bit nasty if, uh, for example, here, well, let's have a look at rook d7. It runs into it, seems bishop e8. <laughs> and so if black is really losing c7, this is horrible because now d6 and that frontal pressure on d6. So this is going to be horrible. White's getting a big advantage. So this seems to be a virtually forced exchange sack, uh, given the nature of the forcing moves coming up here. So knight e6, very interesting. Knight takes, knight takes, rook d2. And that bishop is snapped off. So it really is a raw bishop pair without any counterpart bishop for either. Bishop e6. And we have potential central pawn mobility and also interesting in this end game to consider the light square pawns are fixed and potential targets the bishop b3 later uh, we have f3 okay that weakens the diagonal rook f8 and that looks as though that pivot point f4 is ha handy to hit a4 for example knight f1 h4 fixes down white's pawns first before doing anything Rook drops back now, rook f4 looking at a4. It looks as though white's really tied down, and there might even be bishop b3 potentially. Uh, this is addressed anyway with knight d2 holding b3. King h7, rook e1, and the king comes towards the center. So it's a very interesting position to consider for an exchange sack, is it really looks as though it's not just a bishop pair, the extra center pawn, but black's king mobility be mobility compared to white's king is superior. So it's a whole bunch of little uh, factors which seem to really justify being exchanged down. Uh, it's actually very difficult for white to play this, it seems. We have rook e4, and black just welcomes an exchange of rooks with king f5. Uh, if, by the way, uh, rook, yeah, king f5 was played instead of rook e4 if white had played knight e4 just to illustrate the central pawn mobility d5 king f6 and you can see this is really quite nice for black things are coming along so rook e4 king f5 rook a e1 if this rook was taken the king can actually play a good role in this position the fixing of these pawns really helped the king not to be harassed and as an example just to show an example how the bishops can cooperate with the active king to herd through past pawns. This shows a really dangerous example where the king can infiltrate with a big advantage as, as an illustration. 
So rook a e1, not taking on f4. g5, we have king h2. Again, here, rook takes f4. This really doesn't seem to help white. This position, bishop can entrench on e3 and probe. And look at c4. It's just black's got all the uh, play here. White's in a very defensive state. Uh, so we have king h2, bishop d5, really encouraging white to take that rook off. g takes, rook c1, bishop f7. Uh, here, some accuracy is needed. If bishop e3, this position, it's possible to play this. Uh, if now, say this, this position where both bishops are attacked, uh, could actually be equal for white, breaking through on that default. That's the last thing black wants. Uh, so uh, bishop f7. We have c4, king e6, knight e4, bishop e3, rook c2, bishop g6. Now bishop d4, bishop f5. Black is slowly improving the position now, c6. b takes, b takes. King h1, king d7. You might think, is this thing wrong with d5? Well, the rook on the c file, yeah, it makes d5 difficult here. The, there are resources for white. Uh, this way might actually be an advantage uh, to black. Yeah, white can be in trouble, but in this line uh, here, knight g5 might be the better way for white to go and still fight here. But even so, black's got a slight advantage. So it it was possible, but this just makes things, it's interesting to see what white is actually doing with king d7, rather than just sharpening things up immediately, seeing if the position can be improved. Knight f6, king d goes back to d8. You might think this is a bit weird. Uh, potentially, uh, the black king could go up to b6 and, and try and get in b4. So this is a dangerous route into white's position. Uh, king h2, if knight e4, as an example, king c7, bishop takes, and if the king steps here and is not cut off, and getting to the c5 square, then this is all over. Once black pits picks up an outside past pawn, that's all over. This will be uh, absolutely winning past pawn, guided by the bishop. Uh, so... Uh, we have king h2, bishop d3, knight e4, king d7. Yeah, taking is, is nothing giving up the bishop pair here, because the king could be stopped with rook b1. So that should be only even. So we have king d7, and now bishop b2. This Now it's starting to get really nasty after bishop c2. The bishop's really cooperating to win that a4, that long-term target. And look how it's been ne neatly sealed up on the king side with that h4 restraining white's pawn structure. So white's just a spectator here, it seems. Uh, we have bishop d4 hitting the rook. And now this pawn is taken. It looks as though this is just... White's position has collapsed. This is very desperate looking. G4. Black takes with the F pawn, so not even giving White a major pass pawn. The H pawn might have been something, but the F pawn seems, yeah, how can we use the F pawn? So another pass pawn, yeah, it seems as though Stockfish has given up in a way on the position. Uh, C5, D5. Knight B3. Bishop B2. So an important tempo there to gain a4 without losing the a pawn. So that pawn's a real winner here in the position. It's basically all over, and we've got central pawns now moving. So we've got another two connected pass pawns here, three connected pass pawns in total. Now there's like two connected pass pawns over here, so five connected pass pawns on the board. As the count in Sesame Street might say, five. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so King D3, uh, H3. Uh, we have uh, King E4, five pass pawns. Very impressive. Uh, we have, yes, it's all over. Check from the bishop. Now, <laughs> under promoting a knight to try and get in D2 and E2. The D3 pawn is taken with check. So... This knight comes into the game. 
G2. Uh, just, just to show, by the way, pardon me. So if this knight was taken, then G2. Look at these pawns, Space Invader pawns. D2, for example, E2. Yeah, they're queening. Uh, so rook takes d3 check, king e7, knight f2, we have g2, now knight h3, that pawn's taken. So it looks as though, why did Leela give up that pawn? <laughs> well, this is still winning over here. This is still absolutely winning. There's, there's enough pawns to win this. Uh, knight c2 was played. Again, even this pawn, it's, it's, no, it's no big deal. If that pawn's taken, uh, this is still this forking the rook and knight here is going to just help the a pawn queen. So uh, knight c2, we have a2. Knight takes. Yes, it's it's all over by the shouting now. After knight c1, especially, this is just yep, nothing to see here anymore. Okay, the game does carry on a lot though, but basically it's essentially over. And if you notice the decisive wins are. Uh, Lula does seem to take a time winning compared to Stockfish in general. The the longer wins seems to be uh, seem to be from Lula at the moment, and this is part of the reason this kind of mad shuffling uh, around instead of getting on with Chatmate extends the game quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, eventually the king comes up the board to offer some assistance, and uh, it's all winning, of course, Chatmate. So a nice exchange set game for a load of past pawns, connected with past pawns. Um, so it was recommended for me to check this game out. Thanks for that. Keep up the, the game recommendations. That will make it easier for me to pick future games of really exciting games. So if you've got any really exciting games you've seen, uh, you know, put a hash suggestion perhaps in the uh, comments. I'll pick it up for consideration.